Hey guys, what's up? This is Stock Retail coming back to you. Just excited to take a data-based, fact-based view of the state of the AMC squeeze. Uh, did this once before, maybe a couple times before, but I think it's been since last August or September or so. Uh, and so I was just curious myself. All right, where are we sitting? How do I feel about the state of our squeeze? I like to say facts over FUD. Uh, because often if we dig into the details, we dig into the numbers, it really shuts down the narrative that the shorts want to put in our face. Uh, and so it gives me a lot of confidence and conviction when I look at the data. Um, you know, I found some interesting things in the data myself that gives me uh, kind of encouragement. And so I wanted to share that with you guys, go through that um, and, and give you things that you can validate for yourself too, so that there are no trust me bros. Before I dive into that information and go through that, just want to highlight, this was a tweet from Adam not very long ago, a few days back, and a lot of us were pretty excited. If you had known, uh, look at the bottom there, that hashtag, AMC Gorillas. I think some people thought, oh, that's new, that's a new signal from Adam. Actually, it's been, oh gosh, also since last summer, maybe last spring or summer, kind of before before Barbenheimer, I know that, and I think even a little ways before that, if I recall, uh, there was a group of apes who had decided, hey, let's kind of just take our destiny into our own hands, try to help ourselves, and basically do, um, no pun intended, or maybe some pun intended, guerrilla marketing. If you're kind of familiar with that, grassroots, guerrilla marketing, street level marketing, um, just sharing something that we're excited about. We're excited about movies, we're excited about AMC, we love movie culture. Uh, and so there was a group of apes uh, who started that. I got recruited sort of to help early on, but I, I can't take much credit. I wasn't doing the heavy lifting that these guys were. So a lot of credit to you if you were one of the AMC gorillas. You kind of know who you are. Um, and I still interact with, with quite a few of them. Just love your work. Love your persistence uh, that you stayed with this to the point that it started getting more traction and more visibility. So if you're kind of interested, check out on Twitter in particular. Look up this hashtag AMC gorillas. There's an account. Uh, that has LRR uh, AMC Gorillas pretty much. So that just stands for like, reply, and retweet. The idea is just to share excitement and share enthusiasm about movies without so much being about the stock. You know, sometimes we are all out there talking about the stock that we love, and that is great, and that helps each other. Uh, but you know what also helps our stock is movie going and movie energy and, and people knowing about the AMC brand and us driving market share in those ways. Uh, so that's kind of been a great effort by them. It's just neat to see the nod from Adam. Um, you know, a lot of these are just kind of homegrown, homespun um, visuals that the team spends their own time working up. So just congratulations to you guys, AMC Gorillas. Thanks for all your hard work on that. Uh, and, and if everyone would go back, you'd see I had dropped a lot of Easter eggs. I used to use a lot of their um, visuals. So I try to start getting back to that too. So that's just cool. All right, so let's first dive into the data. You know, one of the things the shorts like to tell you, um, obviously, is kind of let it go, you're a bag holder, that's never happening again. So I just want to ground myself in context and ground myself in reality. So what I'm showing you here is a view of sort of pre-January squeeze. So you can kind of see, here's the January squeeze bump in there. Um, these are kind of adjusted for um, dilution, not quite adjusted for the most recent dilution, but generally you get the idea. So um, you can see the January squeeze, you can see the June squeeze, you can see how radical that was from pre-January all the way to June. Um, and so from kind of early January to mid-June, that was a 3,700% run, 37x. It's actually a little more than that. Um, and I'm going to show you some April numbers on this squeeze. So you, uh, I think I'd looked before and that was like a 700% run, so kind of a 7x from April to June. Uh, and so whatever metric you want to look at, First off, we can say, hey, this happened once before, and what were the conditions for that, and do we think the conditions are better or worse now than that? And so that's what we're just going to compare. And so I'm literally just going to jump in and go through this. I'm going to move a little quickly because I'm actually trying to get out of the house to go to my daughter's track meet here soon. So I've got to get this video done in time. Uh, but I was just excited to look at this myself, and so I wanted to share it with you. So let's just go through line by line. So first of all, what was the short interest percent and what was the short shares? So you can see um, most of this or almost all of this really I'm quoting from Ortex. You could go search these up um, on whatever platform you're on and you can find this data and validate this so that, again, we don't have trust me bros. So I'm kind of taking this short interest data mostly from Ortex. You can also find some of it in Fintel um, and some other sources like that. All right. So in mid-April, and that was just because that was where I could find some data, um, and I'm keeping consistent to the video I did on this last fall or last summer. So we had 15% short interest. All right, and then if you actually look, 
Um, when I had done this in August, you can see also we had 15% short interest. Now you notice this asterisk. I was including APE at the time uh, because we were also getting trolled a lot, right? That, hey, what's the blended short uh, percent interest uh, on APE versus AMC and all that. So I was combining the shorts on APE and the shorts on AMC because back then we knew we were going to convert um, and eventually they'd be brought together. And by the way, the other uh, trolling you always got was, well, this conversion with APE, they're just going to cover all their shorts. So why don't we look at the data and see, did they? Well, lo and behold, we're at 19% short interest now. Um, we are higher in our percent short interest than either the 2021 squeeze or before the APE conversion when you were told by the trolls that the shorts would disappear because they covered with APE. So clearly they did not cover with APE because we're actually higher in short interest now than then. So I just hope you really, I would love for you to underline, underscore, repeat that notion in your head that you were told by all the trolls that you guys are screwed, they're gonna use APE to cover. One of those trolls actually is in jail right now. Hopefully you guys have seen, seen about that too, but I'm not gonna cover that here in this video. Um, you were told that APE, converting APE was going to cover the shorts. Well, we're higher now than pre-conversion. So it's just obvious, you know, fact check, false. Uh, notice though, I do have this double asterisk here. I'm saying 15%. I did my own math on, remember, we've, I believe, you know, last week we got announced this liquidity covenant covering this dilution, this round of dilution. If you look at my last video, you'll see why I'm calling it kind of covering for the liquidity covenant. Uh, Adam needed to bring in uh, an infusion of cash, so he's done that. I believe most of that dilution, maybe even all of it is done, but I'm doing my own sort of mental math on that. I cannot confirm that. That is not, um, that's not DD. That's just me doing some personal napkin math. So may not be done. I don't know. I can't say that with a lot of confidence, but either way, based on my math of what the dilution would be to bring in the 250 million he said they were going to do, uh, we're probably about at 15% short interest. Once you kind of add in all the new shares, it's going to, you know, change sort of the numerator and denominator relationship. But the point is, however you want to look at this, either we're the same uh, short interest as when we had the big squeeze in 2021 and as before the APE conversion, or we're even higher. So check, very squeezy, okay? So in fact, I'm gonna give that basically a green arrow and say, all right, by shares, especially if you kind of factor in um, the reverse split, we're basically higher than we've ever been and by percent higher than we've ever been. This is very high short interest. All right, how about on cost to borrow? So cost to borrow in 2021 and uh, mid-April, we were at 10% um, cost to borrow average and 40% at the max. Right now we're at two and five. So I will say, and we'll go ahead and be honest, that uh, right now that's not as squeezy on the cost to borrow. And do recall when FTX went down, we ran to like a thousand percent cost to borrow. That was pretty wild as well. Um, so let's just be, you know, objective here. The, the data there says we're not as squeezy, but I'm going to put a big old fat yet on that one. Um, okay. On the daily box office. So let's just think about the state of the business. Uh, if you have a healthy business that has been shorted, that's a whole lot more squeezy than a dying business that's been shorted. Uh, if the business is not going well, a short has the conviction to stay in. If the business is turning around and doing better, then I don't know what the heck shorts are thinking, and at some point you, we will break them. So in this case, the daily box office back then when we had the big squeeze was 8.9 million bucks a day. The U.S. domestic box office was making about $9 million a day. By the way, that's a very, very small number now. That's like a Wednesday for us. Wednesdays are the lowest day of the week. Right now, we're in still a, a strike impacted quarter, but you can see, I think we're gonna be about 20 million bucks a day. And then I think in the next couple quarters that are coming, we're more like 25 plus a day. So we're kind of like 3X almost uh, what it was when it squeezed before. So again, just think through like a short saying to your face, it's never gonna happen, you're a bag holder. And yet out of the other side of their mouth, they have to acknowledge, well, the business is like three times better and we have more shorts than before. But never mind, it's not going to squeeze again, right? Like you, I hope you just start to hear that the facts, this is just verifiable data. You can go fact check me on this stuff. Granted, this 20 to 25 million a day, that's sort of recent trends and then also my forecast. So I suppose that's a little harder to fact check, but you could just check um, how did March do, for example? What was the average per day in March? And that is absolutely fact checkable. Um, all right, so I'm saying we're way better now and that's the double green arrows at the right. Revenue. Um, I'm giving you a fact checkable uh, number here so you can use actuals. Q221 that we were in back then when we squeezed uh, was the total revenue 
nice number too. Um, some of you might know I kind of like that number for some personal reasons. But anyway, uh, $444.7 million was the total, total revenue. We make that on concessions now pretty much, guys. That was our total revenue. Uh, so versus Q4, and remember Q4 was tough. Q4 was strike impacted. We Craven had bumped out. Ghostbusters had bumped out. Um, Dune had bumped out. Q4 should have been way, way better. And even without some of those, you know, strike bumped movies, we were uh, two and a half times. So up 150% pretty much uh, the revenue. We were at 1.1 billion versus when we squeezed, we're at 444 million. And yet we have more shorts now. Just say that out loud. Think about how insane the shorts are and how what proof it is that they made a bad bet and are miserably stuck. They have more shorts now on a business that's two and a half times better. Uh, well, one and a half times better, but two and a half times what it used to be, even in a strike impacted quarter, right? Just keep looking at the facts, guys. Facts over FUD. All right, debt. Uh, when we squeezed, we were at 5.2 billion. Now we're at, uh, as of the end of last quarter, so unless we hear uh, some more debt pay down, we were at 4.5 basically billion, down 18% on the debt. Oh, I've kind of forgot to advance the arrow, so on both of those, doing better. Uh, don't get confused by this upside down arrow, that's why it's green. Debt is down, that's why it's pointing down, but that's a good thing with debt, right? So that's lowering our expenses and that's lowering kind of our overall business risk. Uh, this is not liquidity, <laughs> sorry for the typo, but liquidity risk on the overall market. Let's just take a look. So remember in 2021, we were in like a mega bull market. There was money being made everywhere. Uh, there was not like significant liquidity risk. Now, don't get me wrong. Obviously we had the Robin Hood event, Citadel, Interactive Brokers. We had everything that I've shown you in videos with FTX and Binance and tokens and all that stuff. So there was a real problem. They got upside down on some bad bets in big, big ways and didn't want to pay for it. Uh, but the market as a whole and the macroeconomics were better then. Whereas now, what have we seen? We've seen banks failing. You can go out and look at some of the warnings from the IMF about global liquidity. Uh, you can find a lot of information saying that not just shorts, but longs are heavily, heavily leveraged. And so I posted about that today on X or Twitter. Um, you know, what happens if NVIDIA is really, and not just NVIDIA, the whole Magnificent Seven, the SPY, whatever you want to look at, um, what if a lot of these positions are leveraged longs? In other words, they're on margin. And what happens if, you know, for instance, they've shorted Bitcoin too. Like they've shorted AMC, they've shorted Bitcoin. If any of those start flipping around the other way on them and you're leveraged and you get any kind of margin call, well, I've shown you um, in a long Reddit article once, you can see my pen tweet on, on X. I explain how margin works and how what happens when you get margin called. And basically you've got to go find cash. Well, how do you find cash? You sell your, your position. So that's why my thesis has always been that at some point, the longs start getting liquidated to pay for the shorts. Um, long story there, just go read the article. But the point is, there's massive leverage all over the place, which is a liquidity risk while the banks are failing. So uh, that is in the, the favor of a squeeze, in my opinion. Days to cover, that's an important squeeze metric. So this DTC at the bottom, effectively is kind of looking at your average um, trading volume on a stock and kind of if that volume was to keep steady, how many days would it take for shorts to cover all their shorts? The higher that number gets, basically, think of it as like a door that gets tighter and tighter to squeeze out of, which is why it's called a squeeze. We are higher now on days to cover than we were when we squeezed in 2021. Um, just a few other things then. So back in 2021, there were no profits in sight. Like we were, a lot of us who were here then and stayed were operating on trust. Um, now, Adam had brought in a whole lot of cash back then, you know, but he piled that up with this debt. That's how he brought in the cash. Um, and so there was really no profits in sight, at least not in the near term is what I mean. You know, a lot of us had a thesis that so far has proven correct. So I'm pretty proud of myself and some other people who had the vision to see that and pretty proud of Adam for, for having the vision to not go through a Chapter 11 bankruptcy and say, he, you know, believe in himself, believe in the team to get there. Uh, and we're almost there. So that's the point. So I have said in some forecast videos, I've said on Twitter, I believe we're only months away from steady profits. Uh, I believe Q3 and Q4 are going to be profitable. And then 2025, just it's like off to the races. So we're almost there, like only months away. If you think about the fact that for Adam, it's been a four year journey. For most of us apes, it's been a three year journey. I can deal with months away. We are like almost there. And so that's very squeezy to me. 
if you're saying we squeezed back in 2021 with kind of no profits in sight, and now we're like pretty much there to steady profitability. I'm not just talking one or two quarters. And back then we didn't have popcorn distribution and candy. And then we've all seen what's happening with gold and Highcroft lately. So that gets a lot of arrows up. So let's just kind of, I'm already ready to kind of finish this one. I know sometimes I go long, this is a shorter video. So just kind of conclusions. In a, in a time of lockdowns, when we basically had no revenue, we had terrible debt and a, we had an overall bullish market. So, you know, margins were, were available all over the place. AMC ran 3,700% back then. So what do you think happens when we have lower debt, society is open for attendance, we have popcorn in thousands of doors, we have distribution, we have candy. Meanwhile, our token printers, FTX and Binance are out of the way, they're in prison. There are higher shorts and worse macroeconomics. You already know what I think. We will win. Let's go.